Hello creatives, welcome back. So today I put out a post earlier out on Facebook and I asked if you guys wanted to do a beach wreath or patriotic wreath. And you guys overwhelmingly, hands down, I don't think there was any votes for a beach. You wanted to see a patriotic design. So what I'm going to try to do as well is start to incorporate what is known as the budget wreath. So we're going to do those once a, what is it, once a month, a wreath on a budget. So it's for people who want to make beautiful things but don't want to spend a ton of money on it. So that is what we're going to be working on today. We're doing a patriotic theme, wreath on a budget. And before we get started, if you want to save this tutorial to where you'll have it handy to watch at your convenience, just simply click the share button down below if you are on Facebook. If you are watching this on YouTube, it is a replay of an earlier Facebook Live, but you can still save the video to your page or your files or however you have that set up. Also, if you are on Facebook and this is your first time, I'd love to know uh, where you're from and to welcome you. I'm always interested to know how, like, where'd you find me, where you're coming from, how far away are we? Where are you at in the globe of the big scope of things? And so, um, yeah, I'd like to say hello and welcome. Also, if this is your first time on Facebook, make sure you do me a favor and just click that like button down below. That'll go ahead and um, it, it bumps up the algorithm for Facebook. So Facebook will show this video to more people. If you want to get notified, however, when I do go live and for anybody else that you want to follow, make sure you're doing two things that you've liked and followed their page. Like is readily easy to find. It's the follow button that is hidden. Don't know why that's at. But if you click those three dots right next to the like button, you will, um, it'll open up a little sub menu. You can click uh, follow at that point. And then if you happen to be on your device, when I'm going live, you should get a little pop-up notification that says, hey, Cats Creations is live now. You can click on that and then join me here live. A um, little bit different for YouTubers. You guys are catching replays, but if you'd love to participate in a live, come jump over here. We're here every Tuesday at 4 Pacific and every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, early and late. Sometimes you never know. We just throw in, you know, a, a live whenever um, I have some available time and I want to share a new design with you. Also, private group, it's changing so this is going to be pretty much the last, the last, I think last week, week and a half. It goes until the end of March 31st. And then we're changing things up. We're going to be doing a bunch of new things for both the design class and the business class. And this is going to be the last time you're going to be able to get a bundled deal for both uh, this low. So right now, if you go to catscreationsandmore.com, you have the option to sign up on a monthly a yearly and a lifetime rate. Trust me, you don't want to go past April 1st. This is not a joke. Um, this is the best deal that you will ever get. Most people right now are currently paying somewhere between $30 and $40 just for a design or just for the business component of a um, somebody that you follow. So for $27 right now, you get the best of both worlds. Even if you don't use one or the other, it's still a really great deal so you can benefit from both. Um, and then website, let me go ahead and type that in there. So you guys have that available and we're going to go ahead and get started. Give me just one second. I had ordered a new tablet stand. Also, if you guys haven't seen on my YouTube page, I think I also did it on my Facebook page. I did a tour of my shop. It still has a long ways to go, but at least for now, it's somewhat organized, but you can kind of see how I have things laid out to where everything's at. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome from Canada. And Valerie says you will love the group if you join. Thank you so much for that. Elizabeth, hi and welcome. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down so that you can see what we're working on. Okay, right down to the bottom. I always want to make sure because sometimes I have a tendency of working right here. I don't know why that is. I think it's because my table's so high. 
Uh, hi, Diane. Welcome from Georgia. So 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. The only thing you're going to need is a frame and you can do it on any size frame. Um, you're gonna need inch and a half ribbon. You're gonna need two and a half inch ribbon. I'm doing, since we're doing patriotic, we're going red, white, and blue with the American flag. You will need some chenille yarn at your choice. I have them cut into some pre-measured lengths just so I can show you what happens if you run out on your yarn while you're working on the design. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you want to add some embellishments, you can definitely do that. You can add some uh, patriotic picks. You can add pit berries. You can add some florals. But let's go ahead and get started. So the very first thing we're going to do is right here on this cross beam, we are going to hot glue, making sure my glue gun is on. I am going to hot glue right across here. This is where we're going to add our inch and a half ribbon. So I'm just going to place that right in the center. And you kind of want to keep that along the two inside most rails. So we need a starting point for this. So that's where we're going to start. And then we are also going to start our yarn as well on the back side. So that's all tagged, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue right here so that I can start my yarn from the back. I'm just going to put it right here. And then I am going to drop that inside so that this entire thing is going to come right over the top. Um, you could do this with any other type of uh, material. You could use twine. You can use uh, burlap. You can use macrame rope. You can do whatever you want. Um, this way, doing it with a chunk yarn, you'll see the result is really super pretty once we get this going. So we're always going to wrap twice. And then once we wrap twice, we're going to take the inch and a half ribbon, we're going to pull it away. And then we're going to wrap four times around. There's three, four. Toss that back up into the center. I like to keep it somewhat kind of um, positioned right there. I'm going to bring my ribbon back across. And then we're going to do two across the ribbon. So just like so, keep your ribbon nice and snug, make sure it's nice. And so we're going to have the same measurement throughout all the way around the design. So again, pull back, do four. So here's two, three, four, push those together, bring your ribbon back across. I need to get this back up to the top. I always forget to do that so that when I come bring it back, it goes across the top of my ribbon two times. And then we're going to pull it back and continue to wrap. So there's one, two. I'm going to go ahead and tag this one here because this is where this is going to end right in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece. I just have a whole bunch of these little pieces. So I am using a lot of these little more manageable pieces. And then I'm going to tag end to end. Oops, right here. I'm going to hold that in place while those two adjoin themselves. And we did three, so we need to bring our fourth one around. Okay, now we're at four. We're going to push that back together. We're going to lay that back across, and we're going to put two across. So there's one. There's two. Nice and tight. Try to make sure that the spacing and the fluff is always consistent bring this back up so it's across those two frames and we're going to wrap another four times. Okay, make sure those line up nice and tight. Oop, I keep pulling on the wrong one. There we go. Okay, there's our four. Bring it back across. 
always forget to do that, bring it back up to the top so that I can lay the two over the top. And then we're gonna pull our ribbon back. And you can see that I have my ribbon in a pretty manageable chunk. I think it's about 56 inches for you to measure out your ribbon. If you want, you can do a full five feet or 60 inches, and that should be more than sufficient. Right here, we've added our four, bringing that back. We're gonna put our two over the top. There's one. This will be two. I'm gonna flip this backwards. I'm gonna tag this to the back. Put in here. And you can see that you don't see your ribbon roll at all. I'm gonna grab my next piece. Tag those two together. And we're going to place Flip that back around. So we've got our two. Now we're going to go ahead and wrap four. So one, two, three. Let's get those back in there. There's one, two, three, four. And I've got it back to the center lay our ribbon back over. We're going to do another two. Okay, we're back up at the top. Make sure our ribbon is not pinching or um, wrinkling at all. We're going to do another four. found that using smaller quantities of yarn just prevents me from getting it all tangled. Um, sometimes it's just getting it knotted. Okay, so again, make sure it's straight. Get your two across. Get that back up. Make sure everything's straight. Pull it back. Four. So it's wrap four, lay it across the four, wrap it twice, and tag that here and here. I could technically tuck it if I want to, but I just want to make sure that stays on there. I also know that by measuring these out, um, I have exactly what I need to finish this design. Didn't push those two together. There we go. Bring that back up. There is one, two, three. I need to get one more in there. So, right, one, two, three, yes. There it is. Four, back up. Alrighty. Okay, squish it in, and then we're gonna go back across, keeping it in the center, two over. And just keep bringing your ribbon around, making sure everything is the same tightness. We're gonna wrap four. So one two, three, there's our fourth, back up, move it over, lay it across the top. So this is great if you have a lot of leftover yarn, leftover macrame pieces, leftover laundry line. There's our two, we're flipping it back. Wrapping four. Okay, back across. Oops, I am going to 
I'm going to wrap this one on the back because I don't want it to start right across the top. So I'm just going to tuck that one in, grab my fifth piece. We're going to start this one. I'm just going to do one little extra piece here. Lay that over. Push this in. And then just really push that. Needed to get that up and over. Ugh. It just pulled out. So I'll do it from back here. Okay. And I put it in the wrong way. So got to pull this through that middle section. Okay. So back over wrap two. So there's one, there's two, get it back up at the top. And we'll pull back, wrap four. There's one, two, three, four. Nice and tight. Pull this over. Didn't do it again. I always want to make sure it's the yarn is up here in the center so it's ready to go for the two. Fold it back reposition it, wrap four, okay, flipping back over, did it again, we're wrapping the two, this should have enough to get us through, and it does, we're going to pull back, and then we have our last piece, and trust me, you kind of need to know how to do your splicing, because it never fails. Sometimes when you buy your yarn, there could just be a huge knot in it. Um, it could be to wear. Um, that's just how it's spliced together. You know, it's kind of like when we open up our roll of decamash and we find out, hey, things have been spliced together. Okay. So we're doing our four. So there's one, two, oop, three. This is the last one too. Four, flip this back over, do our two. Flip this back, wrap four more. One, two, it should end right here. Three, whoops, four. We'll peel this back over and then we are going to run our two right over the top. There's one, whoops, and two. And then I am going to snip this off. I'm going to fold this and this is where we started. I'm going to splice those two together and then I'm going to finish it off with one roll or one extra piece right over the top of those. This is right where we're going to put our bow right here. So this is where I'm going to finish this and we are done with wrapping both the ribbon part and our mesh part right in here. And this is what we've created this far. So you can always readjust your ribbon because a ribbon is not glued in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add a bow to the top of this. The yarn that I prefer because this is about a half inch or an inch, it just depends. 
Um, I like the Bernat, Bernat uh, yarn from Michaels. That's my favorite. I'm going to go ahead and trim this last little piece off because um, it's just a nicer quality chenille. And everything is completely covered. We're going to make the bow, which is going to feature the same exact ribbon, but we're going a little bit bigger with the two and a half inch. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Teresa. Yeah, this is a little different. So you could do it a couple different ways. I had started doing it with a, um, a thick rope, but then I realized when I went to the Dollar Tree, the rope actually comes in two different diameters. Uh, it comes in a three millimeter and it comes in a 2.3 millimeter. So I couldn't do it with the nautical rope. Um, so we'll save that for the beach themed one that we're going to do. I just need to make sure that it's all consistent size. Um, but you could do it, like I said, with twine. You might have smaller sections and more of them as you go around. Um, you can do it with Americana ribbon and add the jute. You can add the twine. Um, using this ribbon, uh, the inch and a half came from Kringles. The two and a half actually came from Pinky Jub Designs. Um, Kringle Designs with a K is on uh, their own website. So it's kringledesigns.us. Pinky Jub is on Etsy, so you can find her there. Um, we're going to go ahead and dovetail the edge, which is just bring wired edges together. And you're going to cut from the folded side down to the wired point. And what we want to do is just kind of measure. You know, this is where we're going to put our bow right up here at top. This is kind of where I want my tails to file, to like lay. So this is seven inches. I'm going to use my Bodabra. And what I'm going to do is, because I want all my tails to basically be on the same side, the minute I kind of go and do this, everything is fine until I do the twist and then I have my flag going upside down. So I need to make sure that my flag, because it's horizontal, is all staying in the same direction. So the only way we can do that is just keep the ribbon going in the same direction, but we want to make sure that the loops are all the same width. So I'm going to do five, then I'm going to do four, and then I'm going to do three and a half. So we're going to start. Um, I'm going to do this one upside down tentatively for now. And then I'm going to measure out and I'm just going to pinch. Let's see. If I pinch it there, do I have a five inch? No, it's like five and a quarter. Okay, right there is five. And then here, I've got my other five inches. Basically, if I go five and five, or go out to 15, sometimes just a little bit more, I want to bring this back over. This is going to be a little challenging, because normally I would just put it in my hands. But let's do it this way. Let's twist. This is the way I teach it in my private group. We're going to flip it. Right, we're going to measure out our five inches, make sure that that's five inches, and then I'm just going to take it and turn it back around. Still make sure that it's five inches, and then we're going to go ahead and do, let's do four and a half. So I'm lining it up on the 10, pulling it out to the side, and then I'm pulling it back four inches to four and a half inches, sorry. Keeping the ribbon to where the stars and stripes are on the top. Right here is where it flipped, but I just need to get the measurement. So four and a half, and we're gonna flip it back around. Oops, get that back around. I wanna still make sure so we're at four and a half and we are and now I'm gonna go three and a half with this measure Oop, that's back at four and a half 
I want to really bring that in. We're going to go to four. Because I think three and a half on a two and a half inch ribbon just looks funky. So we want five, four and a half, and now we're doing four. And again, we're going to right side that bow back up. Make sure we're at four. And then we're going to pull our tail out. It's actually going to go like this once it's on the other side. And we want to bring that out. I think I said seven. That's like eight. Oh, wait, six, seven. I'm right, seven inches. Okay. We're going to fold this over, dovetail our cut. Now we're going to flip it over because if you notice both tails are wrong side fabric facing up i'm going to go ahead and grab take white white pipe cleaner i'm going to pull this up i'm going to put my pipe cleaner in the inside give it a couple twists Let's go ahead and see what we've done here. And we've got both of those. Ugh, but it's going backwards. Hang on a second. Because I've got the smaller loops here. So I'm just going to bend those in. I'm going to twist my ribbon tails around so it actually makes sense. And then right here in the center, you can tell my um, tails are slightly off. So we're just going to cut half inch off and now they're the same and what I want to do is just wrap the center here so we don't see the pipe cleaner so I'm going to take the smaller inch and a half I'm going to cut just a small little section I'm going to fold it in half so that that is there and we are going to wrap our pipe cleaner all the way around I'm going to open that up and we're going to put our glue in here, wrap the bottom up, and I'm going to hang on to that. And then I'm going to take the top and stretch it right over here. Okay, now we've got our ribbon facing in this right direction. And see, now we've kind of created a really pretty bow for our um, wreath, which is going to go right there. And then it just makes it a super simplified um, design. Um, knowing where our frame is and that we have ribbon right here, it's super easy to add our ribbon to the frame. I am just maneuvering my chenille yarn over to the side. Get that one in. I have it. It just wants to be fussy and stay on a little piece. Okay, we'll just move it over a little bit to the left. We're going to put this one in right over here. I have it, it just doesn't want to pull. <clears throat> it gets caught. <clears throat> on all the chenille yarn right on that little center pin. So I'm trying to get the yarn off. 
There we go. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's what one thin little piece can actually do to your entire design. One little thread. And then the leftover pipe cleaner is actually going to create the hanger for us. Okay. There is our ribbon. And we'll go ahead and fluff the tails or the loops just like so. Go a little bit high here. I don't want them like completely sp like sprayed out. But just like so. So that we have a really simple, beautiful wreath. Now I use a lot of the thinner wreaths like this. I have a photo wall in my house, family photo wall, and in the center, we left it open so that we can add um, rag race, like seasonal decor that is really small. We can kind of hang that up. And then it kind of like allows us to incorporate a little bit of the seasonal flair into our home without going super big. It's just like a little non-intrusive little spot. Now you could leave it like that or you can embellish it a bit. Um, some of the options you have for the embellishments are you can use have these. You could take red, white, and blue scatters and fillers, and you can add a little bit of bling to these by, say, for example, starting red. You can do white, blue, and then, of course, you come back with your red your white, your blue, your red, white, blue, your red, your white. And we could tuck our blue in right under here. And that is a gorgeous way to decorate that. And I actually like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. So I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to take it and I'm going to push it down so it sinks a little bit into the yarn. So just make sure you push it in there so it can go in nice and snug so it's not sitting on the top per se. You could do the same with little stars and tuck those in. This makes this an adorable wreath that is easy to make. It looks super pretty. This would be great on a nursing home a door because their doors are the size of an apartment, but it still allows the residents to have a lightweight um, item to put up on their door. You could add this to your office cubicle for just a touch of a seasonal look to your office cubicle. So just go ahead and tuck them in. And you can get these little styrofoam balls there at Hobby Lobby. I even think that Dollar Tree has these in these colors right now because everyone is coming out with their patriotic themes. So you can pick these up and they make a great embellishment for your wreaths, just to give it something a little bit different. And I'll go up and grab this one underneath, and then I'm also gonna grab one on the other side and make sure that's tucked in. So here's our blue, and then over here, I'm gonna tuck a blue one. We can't really add the white one because that's right where the bow is. But if you wanted to, um, let's see, we could add red to our bow. We could add, we could add a little star inside here um, so that our star faces up with the little tails down there. You could add a star 
You can add it in white. You can add it in blue. You can add it in, um, cause I have them in a whole bunch of different colors. Here's that kind of gets lost in there. So I think I'm going to, here's the white. Let's see what the white looks like. Oops. There is the white, but I'm still not seeing that. So I think I like the little red ball right here. So I'm going to tuck this one right in the center just to kind of tie the red in. But again, Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby. Um, like I said, you could embellish further. I just brought some things over. If you wanted to add pit berries, you could technically, let me find these, red, white, and blue. I'm just gonna peel these down. You could take these, you could tuck these under your bow before you go ahead and put your bow on. You can add some pit berries to both sides. You can have it spray out. You can add some um, red poppies. You can add some blue cornflowers. You can add some white roses to this and kind of give it a, a true red, white, and blue look. But because we're keeping it on the budget side, we're um, leaving it just as it is, but just giving you some options for some additional embellishments. The current size of this is 15 inches finished. We are probably looking at about three inches at the top. So this is perfect for storm doors. Um, you can fluff your bow or you can non-fluff your bow as, as much as you like. Um, yes, Linda, she said it would look great at a veteran's care facility. Absolutely. It could look great on a nurse's station. There's just so many options. Um, Cheryl says, I like the sprays under the bow, right? So there's just tons of options. So if you're trying to keep it low cost, you can just stop here, um, which makes it a very affordable, budget-friendly wreath. I'm going to show you what it looks like on a normal size front door. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot you up. Hello, all. I think we're there. I'm going to go ahead and take this one down so that you can see. We're going to put it on a black door because I think it'll make a statement. Now, the one thing I did not show you is on the back of our wreath, how we had the pipe cleaner. You're just gonna take your pipe cleaner. You're gonna crisscross the ends. You're gonna wrap your pipe cleaners around so that you have a hanger. Okay, go around. I'm just like winding them out so that all the edges are done, but there is our hanger. This hanger is going to go right up here. And then there you have it. There is our wreath on a budget. So like I said, smaller size wreath. A lot of people sometimes are looking for things that are a little bit smaller. They might have an issue with weight. And so they don't want to do something overly heavy. This is ideal. And like I said, I love adding things like this to the inside of my home for our family photo wall. So it's just a really subtle, easy change. You can put that in the bathroom. You could um, put it on your kitchen pantry door. You can hang that on your kitchen cabinet doors if you make a couple of them. And then just add... Um, you know, like if you have longer ribbon, I'm just using the inch and a half that I had left. You could add a hanger here and hang it up over your kitchen cabinets, tie a loop on the end or put a zip tie in the end, and then put a command hook on the back end. And then you can hang holiday seasonal wreaths in your kitchen just to give it a little extra decor. If you're like us and we have a big, it's kind of like, it's all like, it's where the vent hood goes to our fan, but it's all like wooded in. It's all like paneled over. We could take something like this and add that right over there. And then that just adds that to our home. So something a little easier, but um, do you guys have any questions that I can answer for you today? Um, let's see. 
Deborah, Debbie said, hello from upstate New York. Love patriotic. Very cute. Easy design. Love it. You know what's really great about this? This is a really good kids craft idea too. So aside from you, um, you could measure out the string that goes all the way through. You could pre-measure out the ribbon and give them to kids to put together a patriotic design for uh, taking home. You can also do it for Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts that uh, want to make something um, for like whatever their badges that they have to earn. So there's a couple different options out there for this. It's relatively easy. Not an awful lot of um, things that, um, you know, as far as like the glue goes, that was just me piecing together. I had like six pieces of it and I'm like, rather than tie it together, I'm just going to show them, hey, what would happen if you ran out halfway through? Here's how you'd piece that together and you would never be able to tell looking at that, that that's exactly what I did. Okay, well, thanks for joining me and I will talk to you guys on Thursday where we'll have another patriotic design. So I'll talk to you then. Bye for now.